Hi, this is Sherry Gallagher with Technicon Company Incorporated, and this video is on Section 7.5, the Production and Service Provision of ISO 13485-2016. Hey, we finally get to talk about making devices. Now I'm going to jump around a bit relative to the subsections of, of 7.5, but trust me, I cover them all. Production must be planned and controlled to ensure product meets specifications. If product is run on multiple presses of different sizes, there must be a planned set of parameters to follow, ensuring product meets specification no matter where you run it. The easiest way to do this is with a control plan. The control plan defines the methods and procedure to control production. It should qualify the infrastructure. For example, if you need air pressure to assemble two, uh, two parts together, what is the range of PSI that should be used? The control plan defines the process parameters and product characteristics to be monitored and measured to ensure product will meet specification and requirements. It also defines how and what equipment to use to monitor and measure the equipment and that the equipment must be available. I have been in companies where the measuring device was out for calibration and product was running without an alternative method to measure. Labeling is critical to traceability, so the control plan describes the labeling and packaging requirements. The control plan defines the release of product and includes delivery activities. If there are post-delivery activities, they are defined in the control plan as well. Now, Traceability has been mentioned in several other videos. The requirements of ISO 13485 are straightforward. Your organization must Establish and maintain a record for each device or batch providing traceability to materials and components through the manufacturing process and to the deliver delivery consignee. You must document how traceability will be performed in a procedure. Your procedure must meet regulatory requirements. And records uh, you must record the amount of manufactured product and the amount approved for distribution. This is reported in the management review as part of either product or process performance. It's also a good catch if you find you, you are shipping more than was approved. Implantable devices have additional traceability requirements. Their records uh, must, include safe, must include components, materials, and the work environment if the work environment conditions could create safety or performance issues. Suppliers and end item distributors must maintain records of traceability and have them available for inspection. Records of the names and addresses of shipped package consignees shall be maintained. There's no waffling on this one. You got to keep the records. So, uh, we are ready to go into, pro into production, and your organization must determine if it is responsible to keep cleanliness or contamination records. You must keep records if you clean the product prior to sterilization or use, or you send the product non-sterile and the customer cleans it prior, prior to sterilization, or product can't be cleaned but cleanliness is significant in use, or product is supplied non-sterile but cleanliness is significant in use, or processing agents are to re be removed during manufacture. Think mold release agents. Product must be identified throughout the process. This includes raw materials and components through subassemblies to the finished product. The test status must also be identified. Is it tested and passed, or failed, or has it not been tested? Product must be identified to ensure only conforming product is used or installed, and that includes components and subassemblies. If required by regulatory agencies, a unique identifier or serial number must be assigned and documented. There must be a procedure to control and identify returned product to distinguish it from conforming product. And yes, I have seen where a customer returned a product only to have it shipped back without being tested or investigated as per the complaint. Let's talk about customer property. Customer property can be raw materials or subassemblies or molds or tooling or packaging materials or design and specifications. It is your organization's responsibility to identify, verify, protect, and safeguard that property from loss or damage to the best of your ability. 
Now, if your building burns down, I mean, there's very little that you can do about that. If material is lost or damaged or non-conforming, your organization must notify the customer and obtain direction as to additional actions that must be taken, if any. Conformity of product does not end with final inspection and testing. All product and parts must be protected against damage during production, while in storage, while being moved, and during shipment. Your organization is responsible to design and construct suitable packaging. So don't leave it to the shipping clerk to decide which box to pack it in or how much stuffing to put around the product. If the product needs special conditions, such as anti-static uh, barriers or temperature controls, your organization is responsible to document how conditions will be controlled and record that those controls were implemented. Now let's talk about a special category, sterile devices. Procedures for validation of sterile processes must be determined and performed. Organizations producing sterile devices must maintain records of sterilization process parameters traceable to each batch and verify they are in compliance with the validated parameters. Now this leads us into validation of processes. A process where you can't measure conformance and deficiencies will only be apparent when the customer uses the device must be validated. This confuses many people. If you can measure the device and it is still within product characteristic requirements, for example, your testing is non-destructive, validation of the process is not required. If you can only determine conformity with destructive testing, then validation of the process must be performed. The validation demonstrates the ability of the process to achieve plan results. For example, if you are testing the effects of variations in air pressure on a weld pr uh, product um, would be produced at a minimum air pressure and then destructively tested to determine if an adequate weld was achieved. The validation must demonstrate the process parameter limits produce conforming product. Of course, this is ISO 13485, so you need a validation procedure documenting the criteria for review and approval of the process, qualification of equipment and personnel, specific methods, procedures, and acceptance criteria, statistical techniques and sample size rationale, records, revalidation, and approval of process changes. If software is used to control production, the software must be validated prior to using the software and as appropriate after changes. Check with your registrar as to how they view software validation. Many but not all organizations view commercially available software as validated by the software company. Some may require all software to be validated. Others will require your organization to obtain copies of the software validation from the software companies and others will accept that if you haven't modified the software, it was validated before sale. All right, we're almost through with production and service provision. All we have left is installation and service. These are other sections that are frequently considered as not applicable. However, if you have a helpline, that is considered a service operation. Both installation and service activities must be documented with procedures explaining how to install the device and how to determine if it is functioning properly. If someone other than you or your supplier is doing the installation, the installation activities must be clearly defined along with the acceptance criteria so someone outside your organization could successfully install the product. If you or your supplier install the device, you must maintain records of the installation and the verification. Service activities must be documented and include the method and reference materials as well as measurements used to verify the surface was acceptable. Service records must be maintained and reviewed to see if they should be documented as a complaint or used to create improvement. So there you have it. We finished production and service provision. If you found this video helpful, please like and share and consider subscribing to our channel for future videos. If you would like more information, please check out our website at www.technicon.com 
or email us at technicon 1986 at sbcglobal.net or call 708-814-3685. Go out and have a wonderful day.